The Cartesian coordinates is basically rectangular coordinates. Okay, so rectangular coordinates is basically x, y, and z. Okay, so x, y, and z coordinates is uh, okay. So uh, we have we have learned that the rectangular coordinates are basically x, y, z coordinates. Okay, now we have a cube which has a dimension of delta x, of delta y, and of delta z. Along their respective axis. Okay, now what's happening here? See, if this is the thickness, so the amount of heat that is entering along the thickness, entering along the thickness. Suppose if we are, uh, if I am taking the y-axis, then it will be qy. Then the amount of heat that is going across the thickness. Okay, and if I am again taking delta y as my thickness, so it is qy plus delta y. Okay. This is the nomenclature that you need to follow in this derivation. It's a very very important derivation. These three derivations are very important derivations. Okay. Now suppose if the heat that is entering this thickness delta x, then this is qx. Okay. The heat that is coming out from that across that thickness, so it will be qx plus delta x. Okay. Then suppose if the heat that is entering here across the thickness delta z, that is along the z axis. Okay, so the heat that is crossing that particular thickness is Q Z plus delta Z. Okay, so these six heats that is actually flowing in and flowing out of the system will actually form the basis of the derivation. Okay, so let's talk about very uh, important thing. This is E G. E G is nothing but internally heat generation per unit volume. Okay, so suppose if there is a heater element here. So what you will find is Q X that is entering here and Q X plus delta X that is exiting from the system when it is coming in contact with the internal heat generation. So the magnitude of Q X plus delta X will be higher than Q X. We will we will solve it later on. We will uh, look at it. Okay. So similarly, so magnitude of Q Y plus delta Y will be higher than the magnitude of Q Y. And on the similar lines. Magnitude of Q Z will be lesser than the magnitude of Q Z plus delta Z, just because the heat that is exiting the cube is actually encountering this internal heat generation per unit volume, or you can say it's the heat element or whatever. It's something is producing heat inside the cube. Okay, so you just look at it. T is the uniform temperature at the left face A B C D, and it has very small volume. D T by D X temperature gradient in X direction. Okay, in degree Celsius per meter, that is the unit and nothing else. Okay, degree Celsius per meter. Okay, so directional thickness of elements m. Okay, now the mass of element in kilogram m. Uh, rho is the density in meters cube per kilogram. A uh, then area area of the element normal to the direction of the heat flow. This is the normal. This area is the normal to the heat flow. Okay, and then we have c the specific heat of the material. Okay, it's Kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, as we all know, you have uh, read it. Uh, it dates back to your physics classes from class ninth. Okay, now can you see this? This is delta T by del x dx. There is a change of temperature through distance dx in x direction. Okay, there is a change of temperature. You just read it carefully. Change of temperature through distance dx in x direction. So what happens is, okay, uh, uh, we, uh, we will take care here. So the temperature at EFGH phase. Now, what do you understand by EFGH? Suppose if this is my EFGH phase, okay, like it is like E, F, G, and H. Okay, if this is my EFGH phase, so the temperature. And suppose if this is my A, B, C, and D phase. Okay, so A, B, C, D has like T as a temperature, but when it is coming out here. From EFGH phase, this is this is my EFGH phase. Okay, so since it has come across the thickness, so the temperature has changed to T. T was here. Okay, it's T plus del T by del X into dx. Okay, so T del T by del X into dx. Basically, what has happened is it has actually gone bit higher by delta T by an element delta T. Okay. Because this and these are the integral operators, or you can say the differential operators, and they can be 
nullified later on okay so this is the delta t so basically t has been added by delta t a small elemental temperature increase just because of this internal heat generation okay so kx ky kz kx ky kz are the thermal conductivity of all material in x y and z direction respectively and you know what is thermal conductivity by now as i have already discussed in in uh, means i have already discussed so so many times in my previous videos okay i will be discussing once again here okay so q into g that is the heat generated in unit time in watts small q into g is heat generated per unit volume per unit time that is watts per meter cube dt is the element time duration will or uh, we will actually use these particular things and the above this block as well in our derivation okay so energy balance now you need to do the energy balance for any system how do you do the energy balance for any system to perform an energy balance you need to see what all energies are coming into the system what all energies are going out of the system so the energies that is coming into the system will be on the opposite side of the energies that is going out of the system okay so here look at it net heat accumulation net heat accumulation from all the direction okay that is taken as the a element okay plus the internal heat generation i have already told you that is eg okay that is the b element and the heat stored in the body c okay so heat stored in the body so uh, i will discuss it later on okay uh, what do you uh, what do you understand by heat stored in the body basically it is rate of change of internal energy okay suppose uh, there is a human body he has an internal energy now suppose if if he is exposed to some kind of colder environment or if he is exposed to some kind of hotter environment then definitely there will be heat transfer okay there will be heat exchange okay every time he faces an heat exchange so the internal energy internal energy of the body starts fluctuating sometimes it goes up sometimes it come down okay so it doesn't remain same at all times so i am talking about human body but you can talk about any body means any uh, physical object any uh, non living object for that matter it should have an absolute temperature and for that absolute temperature it will definitely have an internal energy because internal energy actually depends on the temperature okay now heat flow at a b c d phase okay the left hand side phase from where the q x was entering so look at it it is q is equals to minus k a dt by dx do you know what law is this i have already discussed this is fourier's law of conduction in each and every derivation since uh, actually these these derivations are for conduction three dimensional heat conduction equation for cartesian coordinates we, what we are doing is for cartesian coordinates then for the uh, then for these uh, cylindrical coordinates and then for these spherical coordinates but the basis will be same we'll be applying fourier's law of conduction everywhere okay so the area will be d by dz and the trick is suppose if you are calculating qx the remaining will be d by dz so that will be taken as area okay look at it okay now this is uh, you know the time has been uh, taken into consideration that's why now heat flow at efgh the phase that is on the right hand side from where qx plus dx was coming out okay so here it is q dash is equals to q plus del q by del x dx okay that is the element this heat got an additional elemental heat added to its system okay just because of that internal heat okay total heat accumulated in x direction c total heat accumulated in x direction that is dqx is q dash minus q what was q dash q dash was this the elemental heat added one okay and what is q q was the basic one that is the entering heat okay so this is q dash minus q so if you you know subtract it because we need to take out the net heat that has came across the system that has come across the system so this is the thing that we that we get okay when we subtract the exiting heat from the entering heat okay similar so okay so this is the thing okay if you actually rearrange it okay we have dx we have dy dz so it will be dx dy dz dt okay now similarly for y and z direction see 
uh, you need to see a trick here. See, it is Qx. So the thickness will be delta x. Okay, it will be dx here, and the volume will be dx d by dz. Okay, similarly for y, Qy, the thickness will be delta y. Okay, then here also it will be dy. You know why? Because these are this is a temperature gradient, and you know from the Fourier's law the temperature gradient. If this is T1, if this is T2, and if this is the thickness, so it is delta T by delta X. This is the temperature gradient from Fourier's law of conduction. Okay, so if it is in Y direction, it will be delta T by delta Y. If it is in, if it is in Z direction, it will be delta T by delta Z. Okay, so similarly QZ. Look at it. The thickness delta Z. Then here it is dz and the volume definitely it's common dx d by dz and we go to remove this volume later on. Okay, so let's go to this. This is known as general heat conduction equation for non-homogeneous non-homogeneous anisotropic material self heat generating. Okay, unsteady three-dimensional heat flow heat conduction equation for constant thermal conductivity k. So what we have done is okay uh, what we have done is we actually have taken like q dash minus q that is the net heat. How we have achieved this? Actually, I'm telling you that. Okay, so it is like Q dash minus Q, the net heat plus E dot G, that is the internal heat generation per unit volume. So it is again dx dy dz plus plus the rate of change of internal energy. So the rate of change of internal energy will be rho C P. Okay, delta T. Or you can write like dt by d small t. Okay, so this thing has dx dy dz. So if we write like, see, this thing has dx dy dz. So you need to add them up. So you need to add them up. So qx, uh, you can write like dqx plus dqy plus dqz plus this. Will be equals to this. So this is basically equals to actually. Okay, this is on the right hand side. This is the rate of change of internal energy. This is delta U. This is not overall heat transfer coefficient. This is delta U, and the rate since it is rate, so it is per unit time. Okay, so this is all about the system. So first of all, dx dy dz goes off. Okay, dx dy dz from here as well. You can take this common. It goes off. Okay, so here also actually. It goes off, okay. And then what happens? It has a k. You know, can you see this? This is kx. This is ky, and this is kz. So kx, ky, kz. And since we have taken this thing, that is kx, ky, kz, it's an isotropic material, okay. So the properties remains constant. It's a homogeneous. So the kx, ky, kz goes off, and this will becomes k. This becomes k. Okay. Now this k will be divided here. This k will be divided here. It it has gone off from this. Okay. Now the k will be divided here, and the k will also be divided here. Okay. So the final equation that remains is del square t by del x square plus del square t by del y square plus del square t by del z square plus q g by k because the k we have taken common and we have divided it throughout, and then It is rho C by K here. Okay, here I have written rho C P by K. Okay, so we all know that K by rho C P is alpha, and alpha is actually has a unit of meter squares per seconds, and thermal diffusivity is actually the ratio of thermal conductivity of any material divided by its thermal capacity. Okay, so since alpha is equals to K by rho C, since the alpha is equals to K by rho C. So definitely, if it is rho c by k, it has to be one by alpha. Okay. So the final equation stays like del square t by del x square plus del square t by del y square plus del square t by del z square plus q g by k is equals to one by alpha del t by del small t, and that small t is basically time. Okay. And where alpha is actually thermal diffusivity that I've already discussed. Okay. Now. Other simplified forms of heat conduction equation: the case one, when no internal source of heat generation is present. Okay, so the equation reduced to see internal heat generation was Qg, right? 
so qg turns out to be zero now because there is no source of internal heat so if you reduce that equation you can see it is just del square t by del x square plus del square t by del y square plus del square t by del z square is equals to 1 by alpha del t by del small t okay case 2 when the conduction takes place in a steady state now what do you understand by steady state steady state means it doesn't changes the temperature or the heat doesn't changes with time okay so when it doesn't changes with time so definitely that ratio that is the temperature upon time that is del temperature by del time is zero okay so the right hand side goes off and if you talk about if you you know combine these two equations if you combine these two equations then qg also goes off and the right hand side also goes off okay so this was all about this was all about the uh, equa uh, this was all about the 3d equation three dimensional heat conduction equation in xyz coordinates okay also called cartesian or the rectangular coordinates